Welcome everybody to this third part of the video series on AWS IoT Fleetwise. We're going to talk about the CLI commands and I'm going to walk you through how to use those. As a basis for the video, I'm going to use a blog post and a GitHub repo, which allows you to follow along if you wish to do so. We're starting with cloning the GitHub repository. For this, I'm also going to uh, post the link in the description below. So feel free to directly start along right now. After this, we're going to create an EC2 key pair, which we are going to use for the cloud formation template after. And we still need to update the permissions for that key pair in order to use it. The cloud formation template will create necessary resources like the EC2 instance, roles for it, as well as a time stream database and a time stream table. We're now going to use throughout the whole video a few CLI templates, which are in the repository we just cloned. To, in order to prepare those for your account, we're going to run a shell script that allows this to happen. Now we're going to CD into the CLI inputs folder and are clearing the screen to start with the first step for Fleetwise. We want to register the account and for this registration process, we need the name of the database and the name of the table that have been created by the CloudFormation template. You'll see the CLI input JSON files always on the right of the screen when I'm using those. Now we're going to go over to AWS IoT Fleetwise to see if the registration was successfully for this. You're navigating to settings and then you see that it's successfully. Let's start with the signal catalog, which contains all the signals for Fleetwise. We're going to now create the signal catalog. On the right, you see an extraction from the JSON file that is used. You'll find the whole JSON file in the GitHub repository. And this contains all the signals that all the vehicles might be able to communicate in your fleet. After we created the signal catalog successfully, let's see how this looks like in the AWS console. Next, we're going to move forward to the vehicle model. As you can see, we don't have any vehicle models yet, and we're going to use two different vehicle models in this video. The first one you can see on the right, and then we're going to use the create model manifest CLI command to actually create the first vehicle model. One thing that you see is that the vehicle model is also called model manifest. So be aware of this. There are two names for the same thing. Now let's update it and you see that the vehicle models are in draft type. So this allows you to make further changes. And once you're happy with the setup, you need to activate the vehicle models. So we're updating them to active. We're do doing this for the second one, of course, as well. And then let's go over and talk about Decoder Manifest. Decoder Manifest, as you see here, contains all the decoding information for a single signal. And you see here, for example, the CAN signal. So how is the signal decoded in this specific vehicle? We have two different vehicles that we're going to create later on. So also here, we're going to use two different decoder manifests, assuming that both of the vehicles have different decoding roles for the signal specified. With decoder manifest, we follow a similar process as with the vehicle model before. We have to update it to be active in order to use it. Oh, I think I missed spelled the name here. Let's just correct this for a second. And then let's do this for the second one as well. Vehicle will be the instance of a vehicle model and each vehicle might have different decoding rules. So that's why the vehicle is that component that ties both vehicle model as well as decoder manifests together. Let's switch over to the vehicles. We see we don't have any right now. One note I want to make here is that you see the JSON file on the right, which has an association behavior. Feel free to check that out in the documentation. We're using validate IoT thing exists. So the vehicle name actually needs to be existing as thing name in IoT core already. Now you see that both of the vehicles exist after we created them. We don't need to activate them. We're moving forward and creating a fleet. So we want to create one fleet that contains both the vehicles 
So we're now going to create the fleet. We don't need much for this, just the signal catalog RN, which signal catalog are we referring to within this fleet, which kind of signals should be able to be collected by the campaigns later on. We have the fleet ID, which is a block fleet. We're now going to associate each vehicle individually with the fleet. We're starting with the first one. We just need the fleet ID as well as the vehicle name. And we are going to do this for the second one as well. One command you might not find in the blog post, but it's part of our documentation, is let's check this by listing all the vehicles in the fleet with the fleet ID block fleet. Perfect, that's clear. We're moving forward to the campaigns. We want to deploy two campaigns, one continuous one and one that's going to be conditional. We're starting with the continuous one. You see an abstract of the JSON file used again on the right here. So we're going to use several signals and the collection scheme is time-based in a period milliseconds of 30,000. We're going to use this JSON file to create the continuous monitoring campaign. We see that this also is waiting for approval. So same as for the vehicle model, as well as the decoder manifest, we need to approve this one before it actually is running. So let's do this. Now, we see also in the console it's running and we're going to create now the conditional snapshot campaign. And the difference here is we now have a condition-based collection scheme that is based on an expression that the variable shunt plus current A should be higher than 450. And same here, once it's created and we see now again it's waiting for approval, we need to update it to actually be running. Perfect. Now just make sure that the CloudFormation stack is actually complete. That allows you to now navigate over to TimeStream, use a query to just select everything and see what actually has arrived. And then you see that you have returned rows from the individual campaigns. Thank you so much. I hope you learned a lot by watching this video today. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything additional we wanna dive into when it comes to Fleetwise or anything connected vehicle related. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you so much.